First paycheck, huh? You gonna frame it? No way. <laughs> hey, uh, this isn't right. No, I worked 25 hours this week. Yeah, flip it over. You'll see where all that money went. What? Why do I have to pay that? You're paying for roads and schools, the military. Well, I thought the government paid for that. And where do you think the government gets its money? Where did your money go? Well, the government spends nearly $4 trillion each year. So where do you think it gets the money? Well, most of it comes from taxes, from us. Who else? There's federal personal income tax, FICA and federal unemployment tax, state income tax, state unemployment tax, and local taxes. They all come out of your paycheck. And then there's Social Security tax and Medicare. Those are pretty easy to see in black and white. But there are other taxes that you don't even think about, and we all take them for granted. There's state sales tax. Some states exempt food or books, but for the most part, we pay tax on what we buy. Do you drive? Yeah, I just got my license. That license is a tax. Pay for your own gas? Sure, now that I have this job. There's gasoline tax. It's just added at the pump. If you wonder why gas is cheaper in one state instead of another, the difference is often the tax. When you buy a car, new or used, you pay a vehicle sales tax, along with a vehicle license registration tax for your state's license plates. If your town or city requires you to have a sticker on your car, you might also be paying a vehicle tax too. Truckers pay a commercial license tax, a trailer registration tax, and a road usage tax. Don't think that concerns you? Think again. That tax makes its way into the price of every item that arrives at your grocery or big box store. So everything you eat, wear, or use carries some of that tax, passed along by the shipper. And your phone is taxed. Take a look at your bill. What's all this? There's a Telephone Federal Excise Tax, a Telephone Federal Universal Service Fee Tax, Telephone Federal, State and Local Surcharge Taxes, and a Telephone State and Local Tax? There's even a telephone minimum usage surcharge tax, telephone recurring and non-recurring charges taxes. Want to get away from it all and go on vacation? Your airplane ticket lists taxes too. Take a look. What? How can the taxes cost more than the airfare price? Sounds crazy, right? It doesn't stop there. When you arrive, there are multiple taxes on your hotel room. Like to hunt? Your hunting license is a tax. So is a fishing permit. Is there anything I can do that won't be taxed? Well, there are taxes to encourage people not to do certain things. There's soft drink taxes, cigarette taxes, and taxes on liquor. And in Arkansas, there's a special tax on tattoos and body piercings. Want to start a business? There's an accounts receivable tax. Open a restaurant? There's a food license tax. Become a freelance game designer? There's self-employment tax. Even unemployment payments are taxed. How does that make sense? In New York City, getting your bagel sliced at a deli will cost you an extra eight cents. What? That's ridiculous. They call it the sliced bagel tax, and it was implemented to make the distinction between prepared foods and tax-exempt foods. And the taxes don't even end when you do. There's a federal estate tax that needs to be paid before any property is transferred to the dead person's heirs. And most states have an inheritance tax. That's seriously messed up. Why is the government going after the little bit of money that I make? Why don't they go after those big corporations? They make plenty of money. You say tax the corporations, but corporations are simply a group of individuals with a common mission. And by the way, Walmart didn't drop out of the sky as a mega corporation. It all started with Sam Walton and one store in Rogers, Arkansas. Most big corporations began as small companies, usually headed by one person. And that person spent a lot of time, money, and risk to make their businesses what they are today. Big corporations like Walmart employ thousands of people. Any corporate tax will result in reduced workers' salaries, reduced stockholders' dividends, or increased prices for the consumer. Well, Sullivan has just stumbled upon the most important fact about taxes. One way or the other, all taxes are paid by individuals, and it's the same around the world. In Europe, 
taxes can be even more confounding. They have what might be called a mysterious tax, the value added tax, or the VAT. To explain how the VAT tax works, let's ask Joan Norberg, a Swedish author and analyst who is on location in Scotland to give us a European perspective. When it comes to taxes, things are a bit different here in Scotland. Like the US, the Scottish have income taxes, but they also have a consumption tax, a tax on things we buy. It's called a VAT, a value added tax, and for most things, like this scarf I just bought, it's 20%. That's considerably higher than sales tax in the States, and here's why. The VAT is calculated on the value added at each stage of the manufacturing or distribution process. When the sheep farmer sells wool to the knitter, the knitter pays the tax. But the knitter gets the tax they pay back when they sell the scarf to a clothing store. Then the clothing store pays the tax. But the clothing store gets the tax back when the consumer buys the scarf. Finally, when I buy this scarf, I have to pay the value-added tax of 20%. Which is why most flat tax systems exempt the lowest earners from tax, so basic needs are protected. Here in the United States, we don't have a VAT tax, yet. But we do have lots of sales taxes. And if you look closely, you'll see that sales taxes take a much higher percentage of total income from low earners than from high earners. So you can see how frustrating this business of taxes can become. But one thing is for sure, everyone will pay. There's got to be an escape. Well, you could move to another country and renounce your US citizenship, but there's a tax for that too. Hey, if it's any consolation, taxes have been around for a long time, maybe as long as civilization. The ancient Egyptian pharaohs imposed taxes on just about everything. The most important source of revenue was in the annual grain harvest tax that financed temples and royal institutions, including the royal tomb builders. The city-states of ancient Greece taxed their citizens to pay for wars, but once the war was over, any surplus had to be refunded. And of course, the Romans must have had a lot of taxes because they had a huge empire and a big government, and their emperors loved to party. Julius Caesar imposed a 1% sales tax. Augustus instituted an inheritance or death tax to provide retirement funds for the military. During the Middle Ages, European governments placed a tax on soap. It remained in effect for a very long time. Great Britain didn't repeal its soap tax until 1853. It seems taxes go hand in hand with running government. Maybe you've already learned about the taxes the British imposed on the colonists, like the Molasses Act and the Stamp Act. And that began the American Revolution. But when colonies became the United States, the new government didn't wait very long to impose its own taxes, like the excise tax that started the Whiskey Rebellion. And in 1798, a property tax to pay for the expansion of the army and the navy in case of a war. What became the first tax on income in America was signed by President Lincoln in 1861 to finance the Civil War. It wasn't called an income tax. Rather, Lincoln's tax was called the Act of August 5th, 1861, and it was a flat tax. A year later, the U.S. would replace it with a progressive tax system, meaning those who earned more paid a higher rate. In this case, 3% on income above $600 and 5% on income above $10,000. To paraphrase what Lincoln's Commissioner of Revenue said about it, <clears throat> The people of this country have accepted it with cheerfulness to meet a temporary need, and it has excited no serious complaint in its administration. I'm not sure your parents think of the annual tax day on April 15th as cheerful. Today, those federal income taxes can commandeer up to 40% of a person's income. But most people will agree we need some taxes, right? This is former Chief Justice of the United States, Oliver Wendell Holmes. Back in Teddy Roosevelt's day, Justice Holmes gave us all what sounds like good reason to pay taxes. Taxes, he said, are what we pay for a civilized society. And today, we must be really civilized. The federal government expects to collect around $3 trillion in individual corporate, payroll, estate, and gift taxes every year. It's all laid out here word by word in these two volumes, the tax code. This must weigh close to 20 pounds. 
By 2015, the tax code was over 5,000 pages long and very complex. So complex, in fact, the tax attorneys and accountants need a wall of volumes to help them interpret it. Why has the tax code become so insanely complex? Let's ask Ted Dabrowski, Vice President of Policy at the Illinois Policy Institute to explain. Every day you have thousands of people descend on Washington, D.C., lobbyists, special interest groups. They represent companies, unions, single-issue groups, and they're all there to get laws passed that favor them. And what they do is they come in and they buy votes, they spend a lot of money, and what they're trying to do is get legislation passed that's in their favor. And when they do, they add to the thousands and thousands of pages of code. We've got them bookmarked here that represent the different groups. You can trace those laws and those groups together and figure out who's influencing what. And in the end, what happens is you get all this tax code, pages and pages of it, books and books. And it means that people then have to be hired just to manage all that code. And who pays for all those people? The taxpayers. Okay, say we can go through the budget and cut out the waste. That would reduce taxes and your average person would have more money to spend. That would boost the economy. Companies can create new jobs and put more people to work so that they too can start paying taxes. I'm all for that, but here, look at this check. It's 20% less than I thought that I was going to make. I think that's an unfair bite for someone like me who's just starting off. And everywhere I turn, I'm getting taxed. My lunch, my new shoes, every time I use my phone, I can't even escape it when I go on vacation. And according to you, it's not going to get any better as I get older. I hate to break this to you, but to tell you the truth, that first paycheck isn't really yours at all. What? I earned this money. I'm talking about Tax Freedom Day. That's the day when U.S. taxpayers have earned enough money to pay off the country's total tax bill for the year. I'll let Ted Dabrowski explain how it works. American taxpayers pay nearly $5 trillion in taxes to their local, state, and federal governments. So imagine that instead of paying your taxes over the entire year, you were forced to pay them all first to the government before you could keep a penny for yourself. The average American would have to hand over their paychecks for 114 straight days before they could finally keep the money for themselves. That means they'd have to work through April 24th for the government, and only then could they keep the money that they earn. Are you serious? You mean I'm going to be working for the next four months for nothing? Well, not literally, but Tax Freedom Day gives you that perspective of exactly how much time and how much of your hard-earned money you have to give to the government. But if it weren't for all those taxes, our government would have no money at all. Some of that money is essential to running our civilized society. Some is not. Some of that money fuels a great bureaucracy full of red tape, paper pushers, and thousands of file cabinets and computer servers. Each new tax law needs someone to enforce it. So add another desk, add another server, and the more revenue we pay the government, the bigger the bureaucracy grows. And that boils down to an essential question. What exactly should the government do and not do with our tax money? That's one I'll leave you to think about.